So the last few months, my kids have been coming to me and they've been asking me for ways that they can make money. And in the beginning, I was just giving them normal chores, right? The same thing we all did as kids. I was having them do dishes. I was having them clean the bathroom, little things like that where they could earn a dollar or two in exchange for some time. But after a while, I really wanted to start teaching them a little more than just hard work. I really wanted to learn them a small side of entrepreneurship as well. I wanted them to kind of see and feel the joy of actually creating something, being able to create something that sells or create an entire business that they could sell someday. But really, I just wanted to teach them that, hey, you can go find something that you really enjoy doing and also make money off of this. You don't have to clean bathrooms forever if that's not what you enjoy doing. So we've been working together. We've been putting together a big list of side hustles and about half of what I'm going to show you, we are actually trying and we are doing and the other half we are planning on trying or doing. So if you want to make a little extra money at the same time as do something with your kids and help build them up at the same time, this is the ultimate list. Number one is operating vending machines. So I don't know if you're like me because I just looked into this a while ago, but my Facebook feed is actually full of people selling vending machines on Facebook Marketplace. And there's a huge variety in prices. So we see people selling from anywhere from free, just trying to get rid of a vending machine that's in their garage, right? To thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, the way it works is you can get a vending machine without a location attached to it for super cheap. You can get a working solid vending machine. You can see right here a couple for like a hundred bucks. Then you and your kids are going to have to go out and you're going to have to find somewhere to put it. And this isn't crazy hard. There are office buildings all over, right? I've seen them at parks. I've actually seen neighbors that just keep a vending machine in their garage and they have neighborhood kids that can come over and buy anything they want if they've got you know, some spare change. So you can get started for very, very cheap if you want to just find your own location for it. But the second way is you can buy a vending machine that's already in an established location and that has no issues. It's already making money. They're just kind of sick of driving there every month and refilling the vending machine and kind of doing that. And they've found other things to do. You own a vending machine. It's in a solid location. And you and your kids are enjoying time together doing something that you probably enjoy while making some money on the side. Number two is print on demand. Now, this is something that me and my kids are actually trying largely because they're really enjoying the process. And with AI, it's become so much easier to do something like print on demand. Now, if you're not familiar with the word print on demand, all print on demand is, is where you go and get some item. You can think t-shirts, puzzles, mugs, sweatshirts, hats, right? You can see this logo right here was actually print on demand. Now, like I said, you can use AI image generators and stuff to make this pretty easy while still being creative and doing something that maybe no one else is doing. The ones that my kids are, are trying and enjoying, things like coloring books, puzzles, you can do stickers, all these fun things things that kids are already doing anyway, and they can actually now go and create their own and sell them. Now, once you've created it digitally, you're going to upload it to a website like Printful or Printify, and they are actually the print on demand company, meaning they can go print it out in a matter of days, the puzzle or the coloring book or stickers or whatever it is that you made. So what you do next is you go to sites like Amazon or Etsy, and you can upload pictures of these puzzles or these stickers that you can go out and create, right? And when someone goes onto Etsy and they choose to make a purchase, then Etsy will connect and it will tell Printful that a purchase was made, Printful will go print, and then it will mail it out to them. So this is such a nice one because there's really no startup cost at all. You can sit down with your kids in a computer. You can design in a few hours a couple of fun puzzle options. And the worst thing that could happen is you spent a couple hours with your kids working on stuff and you didn't make any money. Number three is buying and selling things on Facebook Marketplace. Now you can say, oh, this doesn't work anymore. That doesn't really work. It's oversaturated, whatever you want. But I can promise you it works really, really well. And it's something that the kids can do with you really easily. You drive around, they come with you as you buy the stuff. You can actually teach the kids how to repair things if you want to buy you know, broken down things and get them fixed up and then sell it for a lot more. And you can teach your kids about creating value, making things better, and then selling them for more. Now, the big holdup here and something you can talk to your kids about is we often assume that everyone is like us. We say like, well, why would anyone get rid of that? Why would anyone sell that for way cheaper than it's worth? And that assumption stops us from ever thinking that this is a good option here. But I can tell you right now, about five years ago, we were moving and moving day came. We filled up our moving truck and we came to the realization that we had a lot more stuff than our truck can hold. And we were moving in about three hours. So we were throwing, you can see all this stuff I'm putting up here. We were putting on Facebook Marketplace completely for free. Just come take it out of our yard before the three hour time limit is up. And over the last five years, we've done that multiple times where I just really want something out of my garage. And I want it out of my garage now today because today's the day I'm cleaning my garage. So I post things for 25% of their value that are in good condition. So something as simple as going to Facebook Marketplace, typing in the word free, you can see right here, I've got three pianos in my area that people are giving away for free. These are working pianos. They might need a little tuning or something like that, but you know that there's plenty of other people out there that are willing to pay something for a piano. So you go get these three pianos. You might have to hold them in your garage or something. You might have to teach your kids a little bit about fixing something up, but you can easily sell these pianos for hundreds of dollars. And once again, there's no startup cost at all to this. Just driving down. These pianos are five to 10 minutes away from me, grabbing these pianos and storing them for a while until you find a buyer. And moving on to number four, it's local rental. 
Hills. So a few weeks ago, I went to Idaho, which is the state directly above mine, to go see some properties. Now, as part of that, I had an extra day and a little bit of extra time, and I wanted to rent a snowmobile and try out the snowmobiling. So I went to Facebook Marketplace. I found someone that had a snowmobile, and they rented me their snowmobile for about $200. Just a few weeks before that, I was attending a birthday party for one of my daughter's friends, and they had a big bounce house there. Now, these people didn't want to go buy a giant bounce house, so they went to Facebook Marketplace, and they found someone renting a good size bounce house for about 100 bucks. Now, the two ways you can go about this is you can look around your house with your kids and find things that you have that people would already be willing to rent. You probably have camping equipment. Maybe you've got four wheelers, you've got snowmobiles. Uh, things like that are very easy to rent out on Facebook Marketplace and your kid can do all the managing. They can do all the communicating. Everything can be done through them. Or if you don't have anything, you can put a little investment into this. So we looked up the price of the exact snowmobile that I rented. It was selling on Facebook Marketplace for about $4,500. Now, $4,500 divided by 200 lands us at about 22 days, which means if you could just purchase this snowmobile, rent it out for 22 days of the winter, it's completely paid for and everything after that is profit. There's even sites out there that are specifically for this. Facebook Marketplace has a much bigger audience, but you can look at sites like Utilize, which is built exactly to do this thing. Honestly, for me, bounce houses is one of my favorite ones. Your kids are gonna love it. They can help set up and take it down. They're gonna love the process of playing on it as they do that. And you can easily, once again, pay off the bounce house in about 20 visits typically. Moving on to number five, this is one to many babysitting or sports camps. And I'm very specific when I say the words one to many. So a few weeks ago, my daughter got really obsessed with this idea that she wanted to create, she called it Maddie's Babysitting School or Maddie's School for Babies, I think is what she called it. So what she did is she put up little signs like this one right here all over the house and she wanted to get a bunch of neighborhood kids, babies from ages one to maybe three or four over to our house and she was gonna watch them and charge the parents five bucks an hour to just drop off their kids for an hour or two and she would kind of move them through the house through some different activities. Now, admittedly, we're going to do this with her, but the idea of this video is side hustles you can do with your kids. I've also seen people in our neighborhood do this with sports camps where they'll take a sport that they're good at, soccer, wrestling, basketball, anything like that, and they'll do the same thing. They'll reach out to all the people that have a certain age kid in the neighborhood and see if they want for five or 10 bucks to drop off their kids for a few hours and they'll teach them a little sports camp. Now, once again, the value here is you're teaching your kid the idea of one to many. So now your son or daughter just gets the idea that they can make a lot more money than what they traditionally see just by thinking a little bit out of the box. I can tell you right now, as a parent, I would so happily pay five or $10 for a couple hours in the middle of the day to go and get errands done, shopping done, all that fun stuff. And I know I speak for my wife as well. Now, moving on to number six, it's local to do stuff. But once again, we're gonna add a caveat to doing this right. And I'm going to explain what I mean by local to do stuff. Now, this one I would put primarily on my kids. I would have them run most of it with me kind of being in the background, helping guide and direct. And what it is, is I want you to think right now real quick about what your to-do list contains. Things that have been on your to-do list for months, maybe even years. Maybe you've wanted to power wash the house. Maybe you've wanted to wash the windows. Maybe you've wanted to clean out those trash cans that every time you open the lid, a putrid smell almost kills you. But your to-do list is so big and these things are so small that so many people just never end up getting to them. So we've had this happen multiple times in our neighborhood where neighborhood kids will go door to door and ask people if they have a few different items and they'll put them on a little list and say, are, are any of these things on your to-do list that you'd like us to take care of? And I've seen neighborhood kids go four for four in our cul-de-sac where every single person has something that they do want fixed. And a lot of people really just enjoy helping kids with an entrepreneur spirit. Like a, a lot of us really want to help when we see a kid knock on our door looking to, to make some money that way. But the real key here is what you're going to do is you're going to focus on actually getting repeat customers. And that means you're going to teach your kid the idea that they need to collect information from everybody who they do a job for. And after a few months of door knocking, which is obviously not the most fun way to go about things for most people, then you and your child have a legitimate business, right? A legitimate business has customers and you've got all these people that have been customers in the past. And now you can go out and say, hey, for this month, we're doing a special on garbage cans. For this month, we're doing a special on windows. And you can send out emails or texts to all the people that are your past customers. And you'll find that you start to actually build a book of business and you don't have to go knock on doors anymore. And what a great lesson for kids, right? That they can build something and then they can slowly start pulling out of it and doing less work because of that initial work that they put in. And even better, you can show them that a couple of years from now, even a little business like this can grow and can be sold because a business really is just a customer base. And once you have a customer base, even if it's somewhat small, that's access that a lot of businesses would pay to have. Now, those are my six, but I'm going to be fully honest and let you know that this is a little bit of a selfish video because I'm looking for more ideas to do with my kids as well. And we've scoured Reddit and we've scoured other places, but I found that sometimes the best place is my home comment section. So let me know down below what hustles you've done with your kids or what hustles you plan on doing with your kids. I'd love to know.